Yo, how's it going folks? It's me again, your boy Tabo, and uh, welcome to another vlog. And yeah, uh, so we're just going to continue with the journey. So with everything that I showed you last time, um, learning how to uh, move uh, kinematic objects or how to make objects kinematic and uh, how to uh, instantiate uh, rigid bodies uh, in a scene and the neon effect and everything that I did. So now it's time to take all of that knowledge and put it into my project. So what we already have established now is that I have a 3D environment. So what I need to do then is to basically create a collider for each and every object that is in there. And I also have to um, instantiate some of the objects um, because some of them are similar geometries. So in order to optimize um, so that I uh, save up on processing power, then I can also instantiate basically all the geometries that are similar or that, are, um, that look alike. Um, so this is the setup that I'm going for. Um, so as you, you will see uh, when I take you through the scene, um, the scene that I'll be walking you through is missing. Basically, some of the objects that you might have seen in the original uh, scene are missing, but that's only because later on then I will have instantiate. So I still have to work on that code. So yeah, I uh, don't want to talk too much, but this is basically what I'm going to be taking you through. Uh, what I did, uh, how to make objects selectable, um, there's all kinds of stuff. So uh, let's just jump right in and check it out. Okay, so here's the code snippet. This looks similar to the code that you've seen before. And in this code, this is where I load all my 3D objects into the scene using the GLTF loader. And then um, I have a function called add to mesh list. And this is what I use. Um, I, I use that to create an array. And inside that array, I add uh, all the 3D objects that I've just loaded into my scene. And then from that array then i create a function called uh, create collider and this collider goes through the array and then for each and every object uh, it creates a collider okay so this is my 3d scene and everything that is wireframe that represents the colliders and if you look at the positioning where they are that represents the position of each and every 3d object so that's how this code works it just takes the position of the object and then it creates a collider next to it but as you can see the dimensions do not match because all the colliders have one size but they do not match the sizes or the size of the object that they're supposed to uh, represent so this is where the next challenge lies so yeah as you can see this is what the scene looks like um, so now I've activated the create GUI function and you can see the menu that's on the side there with all the controls that allow me to position, scale and rotate the collider. So the main idea behind it is that I can use it to scale it according to the size of the object that it represents so that it fits perfectly around it. And so the code coming up next is what's responsible for creating the GUI. So basically it takes the information from the create collider and then it uses all that information to create the GUI for each and every collider in the scene. And so what that uh, GUI also does is it calls the move collider function. That's what these two are doing. So that's basically it. So I've managed to create colliders in the scene and to create a GUI to control each and every collider. And so in the next episode, we'll carry on from where I left off. So love and peace, my brothers and sisters, till the next one. I'm out.